pile. We're going to put new strings on this guitar. It's a uh, it's a Fender Squire Strat. I bought it at a small guitar shop. I think I got it for a hundred and a quarter. He had a whole rack of them on sale. And uh, I just wanted something to play in the basement. And uh, I didn't want to bring an expensive guitar down here because my basement's damp. So, But uh, this one, it, it actually plays really nice. It plays just like a Stratocaster. I couldn't be any more happy with it. Uh, it sounds great going through the amp too, you know, so just for fooling around the house it's great. Uh, so to get started, you could just cut these, you know, like, uh, like hold it here and just cut them. But uh, just be careful the strings don't fly back and hit, and hit you in the face. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and unwind these. I've read that uh, it's, it's better to do one string at a time because uh, it takes too much pressure off the neck. But then when you store them for a long time or travel with them, you're supposed to loosen up the strings too to, t <laughs> to take the pressure off the neck. So I'm not a maintenance guy. So you, you have to ask your guitar tech about that. Uh, I've done it this way for ever. I'm 58. I've been playing since I was 12. I've never had a problem with my guitars. This is the way I've done it for years. The main reason why I'm doing it like this is because uh, I want to save the strings. In case I have one break, then I got a spare. I've got one of those spinners around here somewhere, but I can't find it. I had it a couple weeks ago. I don't know what I did with it. Those really help a lot. so much for that. Most guitars are a little different down here. So on this one, they, they slide out the back here. So this might get a little tricky. might be easier just to pop that off. So let's see how that one came out the back. These are color coded too, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I think I'll let's see here. Okay, on 
the other strings, they're the package is color coded red. Okay. Uh, usually, it's not a problem. You know, you can tell a difference between the strings, but sometimes they might be really close, and it's kind of hard to tell. I don't know if I'd put these back on if I broke one, but just in case. Plus, there's other uses for old guitar strings, so they're kind of nice to have around. It's just a piece of wire. That one feels stuck. It figures one would give me a hard time. Figures, don't it? It's always one. Okay. I wouldn't do this with a power screwdriver because you could strip these. If you do strip the holes, just stick a piece of a wooden toothpick down inside the hole to, to tighten it up. I was watching one video a few weeks ago, and uh, I think it, it was a classical guitar, and they used uh, su super glue to raise up the nut because the nut was too low. That's the first time I ever heard of that. So that one stuck down in that hole. See how they're down inside the holes there. Uh, go to Dollar Tree and get yourself a pair of glasses for a buck. I bought these way stronger than I need them. So they work like magnifiers. So these are actually 2.0. I guess it's a good idea to take that out anyways because then then we can check the screws if if this thing isn't working right your tremolo bar you can tighten and loosen these screws here okay so we'll worry about that later don't lose your screws I bought these off Amazon and uh, the, the thin strings of 10 that's a thicker set I didn't want to go any thicker because for me if I go any thicker I get tendonitis in my elbow so uh, I like a thick string so I can play hard but if I get them too thick it's hard on the muscles so this is actually a three pack. Okay. Always buy more than you need because sometimes when you put these on, you'll break a string. Yeah. 
Some sets will come with two E strings because they know that you break the E string a lot. So. so strings are a personal preference thing. You know, you all like a different string. There's plenty of videos that talk about that. Guys get crazy about it. So. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I like a rosewood fretboard. I don't think I've ever owned a, a maple one. You know, that's the bright wood. I'd like to get one. But uh, seems like I always tend to go with the rosewood because it's a warmer sound. Plus, I just like the way it looks. Uh, I'm going to use this stuff on it. You can buy this at the store. It's just a uh, furniture polish. I'm sure it's better if you go to the store, the music store, and buy what they recommend. Especially if you have an expensive guitar. But uh, I've been using this stuff forever and it works fine. So, uh, I usually buy the one, it's yellow, it's lemon, but I bought this one because uh, I did that other video on the acoustic and I had to seal up the hole and I wanted to match the wood, so this will be the same thing, this same stuff. Might actually work better on the rosewood. Hope it doesn't stain my fingers. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna leave that sit overnight. Came off. Okay, so we'll leave that sit. If you buy that and use it on your fretboard, that'll last a lifetime. The, the yellow bottle, it's the same thing, old English lemon, and it's like a, a light yellow color. I had that bottle for like 30 years. I just used it up last year. Okay, so... Uh, I'll leave that sit overnight and I'll probably put another coat on it before I go to bed. You can see it's already starting to soak it up. You can see right in here, it, it's starting to bubble up. Not really bubble up, but it's being absorbed into the wood. So.
also to uh, store these strings I, I put masking tape on both ends roll them up careful of these ends so that they can really jab you and then put them in a baggie I doubt if I'll ever use them but they're still nice to have around just in case okay these are in the baggie they can't jab you okay so that's been sitting about 24 hours. I just haven't had a chance to get back to it. And you can see most of it's pretty much well absorbed. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more on it. Okay, and we'll leave that sit. I don't think I'll get to it tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Okay, see ya. Hi all. This thing's been setting for a few days. So, uh, I just haven't had a chance to get back to it. So, let's go ahead and put the strings on. And that's been soaking for quite a while, so it should be good for uh, quite some time. Wipe it off the best you can. If, if you play a lot and your neck's dirty, scrape down along inside here with your fingernail to just clean out the gunk. I'm just wiping off the 
the excess. Okay, so uh, I don't have any regular guitar polish. So usually I just use this stuff, but the clear one, it's like a lemon yellow. And uh, but uh, I've read that it may not be good for the finish because that's not really a wood, that's a plastic, it's like a plastic coating. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this. It says it's good on clear coat, and uh. Keep off rubber and non-painted surfaces. So let's try it and see what happens here. It should be all right. We'll just try a little spot here. Of course, it's best to go get your your polish at the guitar store. But for me, that seems okay. Just so I get something on it. Experiment number one. Huh? Okay, so I wouldn't do this on a real expensive guitar, but uh, this is just my beater for the basement. Just clean her up a little bit. Get yourself a cheap set of screwdrivers. You don't need the expensive ones. And an expensive set of cost, cost of fortune. But careful not to scratch things up. You know, wrap some tape around there if you worry about it.
turned out all right. I don't <clears throat> I don't know if it would dam damage the uh, finish or not. I'm not a guitar tech. These buttons are really stiff. I wonder... These buttons are really stiff. I wonder if that's from this being tightened up too much. Let's see. Yeah, it helped a little bit. I don't really use those much. I just leave them on 10. Yeah, that helped a little. That helped. I saw a video a few days ago. The fellow said uh, different different pots could make your guitar brighter or less bright. He actually said something about what type of pickups you have. They can put different pots in to adjust it. Like if your pickups are real bright, they put warmer buttons in. Or if your pickups are real warm, like, uh, what's another word for warm? Uh, not a lot of high tones, like the big humbucking pickups. They'll put brighter buttons in here. So, that's something I, I never heard before. Now, 
I'm just going to hack through this. I was having a trip. I was having trouble with uh, I think my G string but uh, I, I got it adjusted here but it wasn't all that great so uh, I'm just going to start from scratch first I'll get rid of this here What I'm going to do here is loosen up the truss rod and just make the neck flat. So let's see what this is. Okay, so that looks pretty flat the way it is. There's a special tool that you can buy. It's only about this long that, that, that they use to adjust the frets, but I, I don't have one of those. Okay, so that's that, that's pretty flat. Now. What you want is you want to bow just a little bit, so you tighten up the so you tighten up the truss rod so it bends the neck up. So you get a slight bow here, so your strings don't buzz. So you just got to find the proper balance between the strings tightness of the strings pulling the neck up and the truss rod and then on top of that you know if you have one of these things that move you, th th there's a balancing thing there too so uh, I'm just gonna put these all back to square one See, I'm just going to put them like right in the middle so I can go up and down even. It looks like well, some of these are pretty low. I like mine pretty low so I can play it. You get your strings too high off the fretboard, it's kind of hard to play, and it's hard on the arm. Okay, so I'm not worried about the adjustment, I'm just kind of making them even. See, I'm down here, they're all kind of the same. Usually, the ones on this end, you, these are a little lower, so it follows the contour of the, the neck. You know, your, your uh, fretboard's a little rounded off, so you can round off the strings here too. You make these, like the ones in the middle are a little higher, and then it goes down, 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 and then hit same here, down, down, down. Thick strings have to be a little higher, because they uh, move around more. So they'll rattle. But if you play a lot of distortion, it don't matter. What's a guitar without distortion, right? And then these two here. I'm going to adjust these so they're right in the middle. See how that one's backed off as much as possible. This is just so I got a, an even starting point.
Okay, so I can go that way a little bit, and I can go that way a little bit. Yeah, gotta get down in there with a Q-tip and wipe out the dust. Okay, so next we're going to put the strings on. I went with these 